Hey everyone, Ozzy Viking here. Let's do a talk on. Yep, Force Awakens. I mean, Force Awakens. Force Unleashed. So, bit late to the party, I know, but uh, the story is since 20, 2007, when they first heard about it, at least I did, I've always wanted the, the Force Unleashed game. Never actually got it until last month where it was free for Xbox Live Gold members. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to play it. So I did. Played through it all. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Wanted to play the DLC. So. I looked it up, and the DLC was a shit ton of money. So, I went and bought that. The uh, Ultimate Edition of the Ultimate Sith Edition. Now, comes with all the DLC and the main game. And you're probably thinking, why did you get the physical? You could get the digital. Well, this cost 25 bucks. That was about $30, $35 less than it would have been if I bought the DLC digitally. And then, this month, for, um, Unleashed 2 was free on Xbox Live Gold, and the DLC was 2 bucks for all of it. So, I thought, why not? I'm talking about both of them, but first I'll talk about this one. First of all, if you're a Star Wars fan and you haven't got this game, get it. It's really good. Unfortunately, it's not canon anymore, because this does have a good story. It's not canon anymore, but it's still a good story. And if, you, if you're somebody that picks its own canon, it's still canon to you. Um, if you do get it, get that version. It's the Ultimate Sith Edition. It comes with all the DLC, and it, the game is a lot better for it. And this is definitely longer than Force Awakens 2. Unfortunately, the gameplay side of things is not as tight as number two, which I'll get into when I talk to number two. But overall, this is a great game, and I'm very, very happy that I was able to play it, get it, and I bought it. So, it's great, and, like, if you just want to be an awesome Sith bad Jedi thing and just have a lot of fun, go for it. Now, the big one, though, I will talk about number two. That's the big one. So, when I played number two, I was like... This is a good game, and it is It is a good game. It's probably around a 7, maybe 7.5 if you get the DLC, but it's not it, It's not the best. So I did some research after playing it, and apparently they had a year, year and a half to make it, and the guy that wrote the story wrote it in three weeks. I am not going to lie. Knowing that, the game did shoot up to be a lot better than it should have been, because it is a good game. And when you take all that into account, it's it's a lot better than you thought it should have been. So first and foremost, the story and characters are actually quite good. Now, one thing they do differently is in this game you play as a clone of Galen Merrick. And it's really interesting how he tries to deal with the whole, I'm a clone. At the start, he's he's being taught by Vader to destroy the legacy that the original Galen Merrick had. Become a Darksider, kill all these people and destroy the rebels that he helped create. And he's getting all these flashback memories and he's like, I can't, I can't do it. And he's all in love with... um. I can't remember her name, but she had the British accent. She was hot-ish. Uh, and, like, there's all this bit, like, I can't do it. And there's a lot of, like, internal fighting. And I really love that. Unfortunately, being three weeks of being, since they wrote it, um, since the guy that wrote it, wrote it in three weeks, and the fact that it only had a year and a half development time, at least, or at most, I think, it, it doesn't, like, it's there. And there is a lot of potential. And there's a lot of moments where it gets really epic and cinematic and it just really comes together. But it's not as often. And I really felt like an extra year. Just one more year would have made this game a damn, damn fine good sequel. It already is to an extent now. But it would have been a lot better if it had one extra year. At least one extra year. And I could just imagine. Just because there is a lot of moments when you're just playing this game. Number two. And you're just like, oh, oh. Like, Galen Merrick is, is, if you, he's an interesting character. OP to shit. And that was one thing that really irked me when I first played it. I was like... Vader should be able to do this. Vader shouldn't be getting his ass kicked because he's the chosen one. And honestly, if anyone's going to be able to rip out a Star Destroyer or do some of the crazy shit he does, it would be Vader at full power. So there is that. But then there's also the flip side of it. It's a video game. So you have to kind of have those over-the-top powers and stuff. So that kind of makes sense. I feel like if they did canonize Galen Merrick again, he'd be strong, but nowhere near as strong as he is in the games, which is fine. Only downside is uh, Force Unleashed 2 finished with basically a cliffhanger and then you want number 3 and they were going to make number 3 but then they're like yeah nah Disney's just like yeah cancel it which sucks because first and foremost imagine what Force Unleashed games would be on next generation like just imagine and I'm not talking about like Xbox One I'm talking about School Pure and PlayStation Pro imagine and just imagine what they could do like these games still have the best physics in gaming still like 
the force, how um, you lift somebody up and they might take them with them or they might grab onto a, a ramp or a rail and all that and you lift them up with the force, still works today. And just the way how the Milakia stuff works, it's beautiful. And I could just imagine a next gen. And originally they wanted to make it open world too. Could you imagine that? An open world sandbox where you can use the force in next gen glory? Oh, you think, uh, you think uh, the Breath of the Wild New Zelda game has good physics. Imagine uh, the force unleashed three. Because they wanted to make it open world, they wanted to do co-op, they wanted to have, you could play as Vader, which would have been cool, you could see Vader truly powerful. And Gale and Merrick as well, they probably, with how storytelling has advanced in um, gaming, you could have had a great story with his love interest, which I really liked. And the whole clone thing, which again was brought up really well in number two, but just didn't get there because again, how they had the time issues. But overall, definitely get number one, definitely, absolutely. Um, that with all the DLC works perfectly and definitely get number two and if you've got Xbox Live Gold It's free from May 1st 2017 to May Hang on, Is it May? I'm sorry. I can't remember the days as well as yeah So from May 1st 2017 to May 31st 2017 it's free Force Awakens 2 is free Definitely worth it, but if you do pick it up pick up the DLC which are a dollar each so it's two dollars for the DLC and you get <laughs> You get costumes, which are great, and you get about an, you get a, um, and number two, you get the DLC Endor mission where you're, you're Galen Merrick, but basically a Sith Lord, and you go and kill everybody on Endor, and it's really awesome. Uh, play on the medium difficulty too. I played on easy, and it was way too easy. I then bamped, bamped it up to medium, and it got pretty hard, like, I died quite a bit trying to get everything worked out, but then again, I didn't exactly OP myself and just lift everybody up and stuff, because I wanted to get my upgrades. So, yeah, make sure if you get number two, because it is a better game once you've got all the costumes and stuff, because you can play as Boba Fett with lightsabers and kill people with the costumes. You could play as Admiral Akbar, just slicing up stormtroopers, decapitating them, bitch slapping people, just as a Sith Lord, shooting lightning, it's best. And then one of the best ones is Darth Malak from KOTOR. You can play as him, and I'm like, oh. And then there's the badass stuff. Um, in the DLC as well, which is about an hour, hour and a bit slightly, if it's your first time going through it, and you kind of take your time to look for all the unlockables, which it has in it, plus the fact of the difficulty as well. So overall, I think it took me between six to eight hours, including DLC, plus the challenge maps, which were unlocked, plus, and this involved on medium difficulty, going through the game, um, and looking for all the, uh, the, uh, the collectibles. Yeah, between... Yeah, six to eight hours it took me. Um, and that doesn't include me. I'm actually going back through it again because when you finish the game, you can go back through it with all your upgrades and stuff and get them off and finish them off and all that and find what you didn't find before because there's still a lot of lock lockables as well. And overall as a package, I get it when it first came out. It might not have been worth the money when it first came out, but now, especially since it's down in price and the DLC is still cheap, it's kind of worth it, honestly. The, the gameplay is just refined so much that it's so tighter. The ability to finally, after so many years, be able to decapitate and just bisect Stormtroopers again. Because last time we did this was like in Jedi Academy, Jedi Knight Academy 2, Jedi Outcast 2 and then Jedi Academy were the, like the last games I can remember where you could decapitate Stormtroopers and people. They did kind of fix that when you could do it with droids, sort of, but I still miss the whole cutting people up and stuff with a lightsaber. That's what I want. I hope we bring that back because it was so fun. And overall, it's still good. I mean, you still got the the ability to replay it. There's still a lot of replay value. Um, you do unlock things which tell you about the universe and concept art of um, art assets and stuff, which is still pretty damn good for a game. So overall, as a package, it's worth your money and definitely worth two bucks, especially if you get it for free. And the DLC is worth it too. The one big grub I have with number two over number one is in number one, they had a lot of levels that were open um, to an extent and they had a lot of cool like goodies and you had really good secrets. And there was kind of some, you know, you had big open areas where you could literally just walk, run around, look around and try to find what you wanted and upgrade and stuff, which were great. Not so much number two. Number two is very linear, more linear. There are sometimes, especially in the DLC, where it harkens back to level one design but not as much as I wanted it to. But if they ever did a remaster and they brought number one and two and added number two's mechanics of how tight it was and the violence and added it and some force powers to add it to number one, give me. And on that, number two still looks really fucking good. 
in today's standards. Like, I'm like, holy shit. Because when I first saw it, I was like, holy crap, this is like Uncharted 2 level of detail. And it was. Like, I've played Uncharted 2. This this game has some fantastic Uncharted 2 level animations and detail. That I was like, oh. And everybody was going crazy over the graphics. And it still looks good today. But I do think that the game could have been better. And only just that one more year. And if they if it would, they were given that one more year, we may have had it at Force Awakens 3. I still think it's possible. But I feel like if they're going to do another Force Awakens, they will just scrap it and do, like, make... I mean, they could just redo this game, make it all canon. Um, obviously change some stuff around. Maybe he... Because since with Rebels, um, you know, Galen Maric didn't create the Rebel Alliance, at least from what we, we understand. So they could still make it canon, or at least they could do a Force Awakens 3 and not make that canon, but make it canon to the games. Because... I mean, they're still making content for KOTOR, um, not, no, the Old Republic, the NMO, they're still making content for that, and that's all non-canon, so you could do it, and I really hope we do, because this game, just imagining a Force Awakens through open world with, like, the Force abilities and stuff would be perfect. Then again, I hear that they might be taking stuff from this, 1313, and playing it into an open world Star Wars game that we'll hear about this year, so who knows? But yeah, that's my thoughts that I really like. I'm, I'm in a big Star Wars mood right now um, with the new Star Wars stuff coming out and Rebels and I really got to talk about Rebels. Oh man, Rebels is good. Not as good as Clone Wars, but still good. And I'm just getting into Force Unleashed and uh, I'm loving it. It's a good, it's a definitely a good action game. The first one's definitely a must get and the second one, actually I'd say they're both a must get and get them with the DLC. Make sure you get them with the DLC. This one, just get this version of the first game and the second one, just download the DLC. It's two bucks. It's not going to break the bank. Anyway, that's Aussie Viking out. I shall see you on Valhalla. Bye.